Hi everybody, today's question asks, what is carfentanil? Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, my name is Dr. B with Dr. B Addiction Recovery. Uh, if you enjoy our content, please go ahead, subscribe, and press the like button. Uh, in addition, if you're so inclined, we have the Patreon account for as little as $3 a month. You can contribute to our monthly educational efforts. Let's get started. Uh, the question today is, what is carfentanil? And I think this is an opportune time now, uh, historically, to discuss uh, this medication. Carfentanil, um, as you can see, it's an opiate analog of fentanyl, and just the slight addition to the original molecule creates another molecule. And interestingly, it is considered the most potent synthetic, meaning fully laboratory made opiate in the world at this time, which is crazy. Just to give you an idea, it is about 10,000 times stronger than morphine, which is sort of our like uh, clinical gold standard poster child opiate. And it's uh, uh, obviously, uh, you do the conversion, it's 100 times stronger than fentanyl. And you may ask, uh, what can you use such a thing for? Well, uh, it is not indicated for uh, use in uh, human beings at all in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it's used as a large animal tranquilizer, uh, and it's used by large animal vets. Uh, they use a dart gun, and uh, they use an intramuscular injection to tranquilize and sedate large animals. Uh, it's important to know that it is um, a controlled substance in 19 countries or maybe more by this time. Uh, this data was a couple of years old that I was uh, sifting through, uh, including the United States, Austria, Australia, Germany, and many others. Um, uh, other things that are sort of uh, important to know about this drug, other things that I want to note here and why I'm bringing a discussion to this uh, uh, drug, this opiate, is uh, uh, it's interesting when you look up, uh, try and do a literature search, it's very clearly stated that uh, the abuse potential, uh, the sort of addiction potential, uh, the dependence potential of this drug has never been tested in humans. And this is uh, really important to note. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't have a very serious uh, abuse potential. Of course, if you last long enough to abuse it, because more than likely it will kill you pretty quickly on the first couple of tries. And we'll get into why in a second, uh, which is much more complex than it just being very potent. Um, that means, uh, but, you know, we can look at this structure and the way it behaves in animals, and you can just think of it as extremely powerful heroin or oxycodone or fentanyl or morphine or any one you choose. So keep in mind, there's really no clinical studies. Nevertheless, uh, uh, reports of overdoses are sort of creeping up around the world. Uh, in the U.S., some of the cocaine has been laced with this stuff. And in addition, some of the heroin has been laced with this stuff. Mainly, uh, up to the couple of years ago that I was mentioning, this has been in Ohio and Florida. And what is uh, makes it even more accessible is uh, because of its chemical properties, you can take this drug uh, multiple routes, intramuscular, intravenous, oral, uh, and uh, intranasal. So uh, this gives it greater accessibility and greater uh, uh, sort of capacity to be able to ingest it into the body. Um, now, certainly you might say to yourself, well, no reasonable or rational person would go just simply take this medication. Okay? And uh, uh, that seems a reasonable thought. Uh, here's the problem. You would think that about fentanyl, right? Uh, as it is uh, vastly more potent than uh, uh, um, uh, morphine um, 
or even heroin in this case and why would people take it okay and uh, where is it that things go wrong with these highly highly potent opiates here's where they really go wrong let me use uh, fentanyl as an example fentanyl is in fact a fantastic drug for the appropriate uses in the emergency department in anesthesia in procedural sedation and in the icu right uh, because of the fact that it's short acting and quite rapid in its onset it gives it certain properties for example if you go and do a gi procedure and you want to be out of the door that same day it, it's off quick off uh, on quick off quick so these are great medications but when it is so much more powerful than the morphine next door, right, you're getting laboratory grade material and you're measuring it in a professional controlled setting. Mistakes are rarely made, even though they are, okay? Now you take that uh, substance and put it on the street where it's illicit manufacturing and being used in not a controlled environment, in addition to the fact that wherever it's coming from and whoever's cutting up the drugs might be mixing the drugs. So you might think you're getting heroin or oxys uh, or, or, or morphine even, and uh, it just happened to be cheaper to cut it down with fentanyl. Uh, well, now you have real potential disaster at hand because of the fact that it's so much more potent and dosing it is that much more important. Take that same concept and uh, multiply it <laughs> by a thousand and you have carfentanil as an issue. As I said, uh, fatal overdose numbers are increasing. In fact, this stuff uh, is has enough of a presence on the streets where there's a sort of street names for it, okay? Uh, elephant tranquilizer, which is actually uh, what it is. Great death, C50. Now, when you tell me something has street names for it, that actually raises my red flags even more because it means that there's enough of it out there where uh, uh, it's gained enough of a popularity where it has a street name. Now let's talk about a concept called lethal dose, okay? Uh, which is, you know, uh, uh, a certain amount that it takes to kill somebody and they take an average in the LD50 and so forth. That's not important. The point, point, point is knowing how much will kill a person. We don't know. Uh, we just don't have that number in humans. We do have some case reports of uh, accidental exposures one of them was a vet, and uh, some of this stuff got in his eye, and he immediately, a very small amount got in his eye, and he immediately started to get sedated and drowsy, and he had to take 100 milligrams of naltroxone to be okay, and I don't believe there was a hospitalization. In another case, uh, Chechen terrorists uh, in Russia, I believe it was 2012, uh, took a bunch of hostages in a theater and they sprayed some sort of a chemical gas in there. About 150 people, including 30 or 40 terrorists, had to be hospitalized and some needed uh, as little as oxygenation and some needed as much as mechanical ventilation, which means a tube down their throat to breathe to be able to bring them back or keep them alive because of exposure of this stuff. So uh, one of the effects besides the usual opiate sedation, uh, uh, analgesia, uh, is profound and rapid respiratory depression. It is responsive to naloxone and naltroxone. So it does work uh, if you uh, are exposed. And in fact, the recommendation is to always have some of the reversal agents around when this stuff around is around. Uh, for our population, uh, the point of this is uh, be really careful. It appears that there's increasing number of accidental overdoses. And one more thing that I should mention, 
there's probably a lot more overdoses than we know of because it's detection in body fluids in the traditional methods because of uh, it's uh, so potent, uh, have not picked it up traditionally. Uh, and it's not hard for them to develop methods of picking it up, whether it's post-mortem, after death, or before, or in the urine. But it wasn't looked for before. So we have probably missed a lot of overdoses with this stuff in the body. And that can uh, we can become better on that. Nevertheless, uh, for those of you out there, uh, you should be really wary and cautious that this stuff is out there. Uh, I, I don't know the trajectory, but it appears at least from uh, a report uh, from a couple of years ago that since 2016, this has been making more and more and more of a dramatic presence on the streets uh, in the international scene. But we're just talking about the U.S., in particular, Ohio and Florida is where the overdoses have been found. And it's important to note that uh, looking at the uh, looking at the manufacturing process, it's a pretty easy follow along cookbook step by step process for those that are into those kinds of things and do this kind of thing. So even manufacturing it shouldn't be all of that all that different. In short, uh, it's a little pre-warning. Um, I can't sense the direction this will go, but uh, hey, why not? Where there's a dollar to make, human lives don't seem to matter to some people, and we do have a substance abuse problem out there. Be really safe and careful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you want to see other videos like it, please click the link above to my left. Uh, I would love a subscribe and a thumbs up button and I will see you next time.